I grew up like a savage. And he died, threw all the way off. We got through all the way off because we had a lot of stuff up that was going on. And I was just like, damn, what we going to do now? And then we were sitting around looking at each other. Kilo and everybody was like, well, shit, somebody going to have to step up and take this to the next level. We gonna gotta carry I did, this. I, I knew that. I knew all that. Yeah. It was like we gotta carry this shit going. So it's either gonna be you, Huss, Ryder, or Jack. Which one of you niggas gonna do it? Right. And I came off the bench like a six man. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't projected to be like I came off like a James Harden, where we had the the Kevin Durant, we had the Russell Westbrook, and we all had Oklahoma. We all was Oklahoma <laughs> Thunder. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. Know, the Thislahoma Thunder. Yeah. And it was like, nigga. You're going to have to go to the Rockets or you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to carry this team, do something. When you So when we go back to Nig Latin, mm -hmm. how was you distributing that? We went through Selecto Hits. Selecto so Missy Hits. Out of, uh, Missy, um, I can't think of her last name, but she was, uh, she was out of uh, Memphis. That was out of Tennessee. Selecto Hits put out my first album. Wow. Then we delivered Son of a Pimp to Walt. That okay. was City Hall. City Hall. Um, that's a reoccurring story. No pre-orders, no nothing. Nobody gave a damn about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? No, it was, was what it was. It wasn't like no crazy pre-orders. It wasn't no crazy buzz behind it. Yeah. Um, I dropped this record called uh, Super Sick With It. Super Sick With It was the first time that um, Thiz had ever linked up with Sick With It records. Okay. Mm. E-40 son did the beat. Droopy. Droopy. Shout um, out to Droopy. The record was a record with me, Turf Talk, and... E40. Okay. Um, for the first four months, everybody thought it was E40 song. Mm. They would never, uh, you know, I was going through the little situation, the pre situation with radio at the time where um, the way that it broke was at Ambassador's Lounge at 40s okay. Club. Okay. So they would play that record and it just became the biggest record in the Bay at the time. Nobody was, every time that record came on, it was like, yo, this is crazy. Yeah. And that's where. The term, I do the dummy, retarded, and ride the yellow bus came from. Right. Um, I felt like that line stood out a lot. Therefore, that birthed the yellow bus movement for myself. Yeah. Um, that record got big, got on the radio, crazy, crazy, buzzing, buzzing. We dropped Son of a Pimp. Son of a Pimp had that record. It had New Oakland. It had Kicked Out the Club. Mm-hmm. Um, it had Hey Lil Mama, mm -hmm. which Trackademics produced. Yeah. Actually, Trackademics did nine songs on Son of a Pimp. He did yeah. the whole album almost. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, it had a beat from Kanye West. Yeah. Mm. This I is at the time. Show. I met Kanye at the Wake Up Show with Sway. Uh-huh. Um, Sway and Tech introduced us, and he was just like, yo, get him some music. I'm like, let's do something. And Tech mixed it, right? Most definitely. Yeah. Mm. Um, so... These are just, you know, Son of a Pimp is, is crazy. It's a, a whole history behind that album. Um, but at that time, when the radio started buzzing, 2005, 2006, the, I had... The Wake Up Show was still here? Yeah. In 05? Sure. Was it Bay Area here? Yeah. No, no you was, was in, in LA. LA. Right, in LA. right, right, right. In LA. And um, I was working my ass off, man. But by the time I got signed to Atlantic, I had 10 songs on the radio. I had, Damn. I had New Oakland. These are currently on the radio. Like, okay. all these records was on the radio. I had New Oakland. I had Super Sick With It. I had Hey Lil Mama. I had Ghost Ride It. I had Kicked Out the Club. I did The Vans remix. Mm -hmm. I did Grown Man remix. Mm -hmm. I get my Grown Man on. Yep. Um, Uh, what other records was going? Um, it was like three more records. It was a. Uh... So back then it was about the BDS. Your name is coming up in every rotation. And they looking like, how the hell do he got what all he these doing? records? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Like it's like he's on all of these records. Like yeah. these records is crazy. Yeah. Um. Oh, sideshow. Sideshow. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Sideshow. Sideshow. Uh. It was just hella records, bro, at the so time. So when you yeah. did Super Sick with it, yeah. how did you come up with the hook? He sent me the beat. I'm lying. I went and got the beat. Okay. He was at Dublin High at the time. He was a senior in high school. Okay. Me and Jay Nash drove up to the high school, and he gave me the beat on the CD. Mm -hmm. Jay Nash had an Escalade with hella slap. When we got in the car, he cut the beat on, and I was like, 
fuck I'm supposed to do this? Yeah. And I was like, I don't know, that shit slapping though. Yeah. I'm like, but what kind of slap? Like I ain't yeah, never heard no shit like I never heard no beat like that. Right. So I didn't know I didn't know what the hell I was supposed to rap to. I'm like, I'm supposed to rap to this shit. Uh, yeah. to the studio, I played it for everybody in the studio, and I'm like, this shit slap. Yeah. Right. I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do to this stuff. Yeah. And so, I was like, shit, nigga, she isn't sick with it, nigga, this us. The yeah, is sick with it, we, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. So I went in there and freestyled the hook. And I was like, oh, that's hard. So some of the homies from Thiz was like, nigga, we ain't sick with it, nothing. Yeah. We don't fuck with them niggas. Like, it was right. just, at the, you know, it was, right. it was Vallejo shit. I yeah, knew back about then. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, nigga, I don't know nothing about that, nigga. E-40 was one of my favorite rappers, nigga. Yeah. It's a yeah. dream come true, nigga. Yeah. I got a chance to do a song with 40. Yeah. Did the shit. Did the song. Brought people together. Brought the stuff together. The energy was great. Wish we could have did the video for it, but back then videos was hundred thousand dollars, fifty, seventy five, hundred thousand dollars. Right, right, right. That shit was right. So that was dope. Like that, you know what I'm saying, yeah. super sick. Would have kicked the doors off. And, and as much as it did for me, with my introduction to outside of Oakland, just into the greater Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Like if you was from yeah. Oakland, you knew me or whatever. Right, you see right. me around in the truck or whatever. Right. But the introduction to the greater Bay Area. With you know, with forty being on the record and stuff like that, it also brought forty back. Okay. Because he hadn't done anything at the time. Okay. He hadn't dropped in a little bit. Yeah. And he was kind of like at that at that stage of where I'm gonna go with this. Right. That's when he embraced his. I'm gonna fuck with the youngsters. I'm gonna fuck with the youngsters. Because he do yeah. it to this day, and it's sure. kept him lit. You he's, know what I'm saying? He told me a big quote that I always remember from him is. Turn with the times or the times will turn on you. Mm, that, that's the truth. It's one of his signatures and how he maintains his relevancy. Yeah. Because he's a fixture. Uh, oh, he's, he's a fixture good. in the game and you can only get 140. Yeah, right? only one. So there's no expiration date on that. Yeah, right? yeah. I got there's, a, there's a lot of people who they are, who they are, but there's only 140. There's only one too short. Right. That's why they could do this shit until... They kick the bucket. Yeah. How did your short relationship come so knit tight like that? Um, short would be at my mom's club when I was young. My mom ran this club, the strip club, at uh, which later turned into being Mingles. That's how I always had a relationship with Mingles because I was always already in that club when John Ivy owned it. Yeah. Uh, it Shout called, out to John Ivy. It was what else he owned? Guy. He did on, on Broadway. I mean, uh, he, around the corner, he ended uh, up getting uh. uh on Broadway was that? No, it wasn't on Broadway. The uh, the Jamaican dude on on Broadway. He owned another one of them. Other ones. It was John and Fred. John and Fred. Yeah, 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 brothers. yeah, yeah. Um, they uh, it was called Maxine's. Mm -hmm. The first stop at Maxine's. Mm -hmm. uh, it was where Mingles was. It was before it turned into Mingles. Yeah. But my mom would run uh, a stripper night there on Mondays, and the Cadillac Club Frog. Frog from 8-9, mm -hmm. Frog from Sobrani. Uh, mm -hmm. oh. I was in a notorious ball fight, bar fight in Maxine's, by the way. Like? Got real? Got real? With Jug, nigga. <laughs> with Jug. With, they was, my nigga bumped a nigga with a drink in the bathroom. They was tripping. It was ugly. I was hella little in that fight, nigga. Shout out to FROG asking me outside, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> On the real, nigga. I was a little nigga in there. And, uh, um, it was crazy. That shit was wild, man. That shit was I, I, I that shit was crazy. And uh, my nigga tattoo from High Street Mama, which is Frog's sister, was a security. And okay. I remember when I walked in that motherfucker, she like, this nigga go to school with my son. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was, it yeah. was crazy, but so short and then would always be with the Cadillac Club. It'd be all the OGs, you know, Boo, Mike, mm. um, uh, Uncle Jock, everybody, PO, and they would always be down there. And I remember seeing Short, and I told him, man, I'm, woo, 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 son, man, the lady from the club. I was always the kid in the club. Y'all always right. just asked, yeah. I was this kid in this damn club. Right. 
Because it'd be certain nights, my mama ain't, you know, you know, when we was young, it wasn't no babysitter. It was lock nah, the damn door, don't open man, it for nobody. Stay your ass in this motherfucker, don't answer the phone. Don't, don't answer the goddamn phone, phone, don't open the door yeah, for nobody. Yeah, wasn't yeah, no babysitter. Yeah. They'd be 10 years old watching yeah, yourself. Yeah. Right. <laughs> don't cook shit, yeah. put some goddamn top ramen in the back. I always say these kids weak as fuck. It's I wish you no would. Yeah, right. yeah. Nigga, shut the damn door, nigga, don't open it don't up for nobody. Don't answer the goddamn phone. Don't look out blinds, nothing. So, some nights my mom would take me to work with her. Mm-hmm. Late night, nigga. It'd be like, you feel me? Then I got to the level where I was 12, 13, and she'd be like, nigga, you want to go out? Come on. I'm going to show you. But she was doing it to show me the life that I would be indoctrinated into. Yeah. So it would be like, right. nigga, this it's stripper, that's right. it's pure gay. This person, this why she stripped. This bra, she ain't cool. This bra, she going to school, with, so she paying for this money. She don't really do this. This just her late night personality. This bra just like the attention. This bra just like the money. This bra, her freakness is her weakness. She like, me and she would just game. show me all the different women, and then she would show me all the ball players and the people to be. This nigga's a trick. This nigga's a player. This nigga's woo woo right. woo. This nigga's a gangster. Right. And she would like. What it did was she broke down the microcosms of personalities and characteristics. And regardless if the person changes, the characteristics remain the same. Right. So therefore, in the social realm of speaking, you can always learn what kind of person a person is by their character. Just analyzing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I just would just sit back and people watch. I see you doing that now. Though. I do it now. I've, I've utilized that. And it was crazy. Yeah. I never knew in my lifetime that I lived by those rules. Right. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I got older and I learned to apply that to my game. Mm-hmm. And you just watch and you learn. Saying all that to say, short remembered me as being the young kid. Yeah. And I went up to him one day. I was like, man, I'm the hottest nigga in the bay right now. Nigga, I'm woo woo. Nigga, I got this going on. I got yeah. this going on. And he was like, uh, he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that nigga said, go cold and get hot again. Then I holler at you. Damn. <laughs> I said, nigga, what? Damn. I walked up, I went back, I told my mom, I'm like, man, this nigga short hated on me. Yeah. She said, like, what? Say, man, I told this nigga I was one point, I was popping it, and then this, this nigga tell me. Cold. Nigga, go cold and get hot again. Go cold and get hot again. She said, nigga, he gave you the game with longevity. She said, yeah. anybody could be hot. But nigga, can you go cold and get hot again? She was like, that's going to show that you're going to be able to stick with it. Right. It's like, every nigga could take a punch till he get punched. But can you get up from that punch? Mm. And that's the story of my life, of being able to say, life is about runs. It's about transitioning, and it's about adapting. And being in a situation where, yeah, you could be the hottest, but how will cold affect you? Mm. Are you hot because it's in you, right. or just somebody put it on you? Right. Like, right. N- nigga could make you hot. But when you venture off and you go on your own, can you keep that temperature? Right. Mm-hmm. And if you go cold, nigga, can you get hot again? Or do you need somebody to warm you? Right. Like Jay told a nigga, nigga, everybody saying they made hoes. Make another make one. Another make another hole, make nigga. And make another one. Since you made me. Since you that raw. Since you that raw, hoes. nigga, you made me. Making hoes. You made hoes, nigga. Go make another me then. And it is yet to be done. So, so when you got out of that, when you got out of that, Label deal and you with you with this now. Yeah, you signed with this. There was never no signatures. Never no signatures. Nobody it handshakes. Signed with this. It was all just bro. I'm fucking with y'all. You fucking me. All right, cool. Like Mac Dre. My cousin was managing Mac Dre at the time. Um, my cousin Nucci, which is who I talked about earlier. My cousin Root Dog's brother. Okay. So we were all in the same circuit. So okay. Nucci was like, Pete, I see you working. Like you working? He's like, man, I'm gonna have you come meet up with Dre and see what's up. You know, Dre trying to start this label and won't won't. Now, Oakland niggas, the reason why I knew Dre is because my cousin Lawan was from the Crest. So on the weekends, I would go stay at my Auntie Susie house in the Crest. And I would be with all the Vallejo niggas and they would be listening to Vallejo music. Okay. That's what we call it. We town dude, that's what we call yeah, it. Yeah. So they would be playing the Mac Dre's and the, the Coolio, the underdogs, and I'd be like, bro, we don't be slapping this shit, bro. Right, right. Like, nigga, you don't listen to man. Like, this was the yeah. rompilation. I think Dre had just got out and created the rompilation. Rompilation was hard. And we was like, bro, we ain't, I 
I'm yeah. like, bro, play three times, bro. You yeah. tripping, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Play that three times. Like, I ain't off this. Yeah. Like, yeah. we ain't on these niggas. You right. niggas is crazy. Right. So, Oakland niggas, regardless if they'll ever admit it, pre, okay, the older niggas who fucked with Dre on Too Hard for the Radio, they was like, okay, we fuck with the yeah. old Mac Dre. They yeah. do Mac Dre. Like, yeah. life is a bitch, old, bro. You yeah. feel me? But, my generation, that was like after he went to jail and Oakland niggas wasn't listening to Mac Dre. Yeah. Like, let's just be honest. Yeah. This is a fact. So, pre Trill TV, niggas was like. Yeah. Yeah. I knew, only reason I knew about it because I was in uh, motherfucking YA with Vallejo niggas. So that's how I got up on the rap relation. So, but I was in the crest, so I knew. I'm like, okay. Yeah. But as I started listening, I'm like, okay, this nigga be going crazy. Yeah. yeah. So when the opportunity was presented to me, my cousin like, nigga, Dre. I'm like, Dre, okay, rap relation, okay. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Then Trill TV came out, and that was just like. Yeah, that went crazy. That went this crazy. This nigga's a star. Yeah. Right. That's all anybody right. ever needed was a bit. Right. We visible. needed a star. Like, yeah. Dre yeah. showed us. Yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this. Dre was the Bay Area's Nobody would ever get bigger than Hammer. Let me just say that sidebar. Okay. Mega star. Okay. But Dre was like the first street rap nigga star that we saw, that we had. 